Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat interesting idea that was published back in 1990 in Nature magazine. The idea that there seems to be a bit of a correlation between every time the sun itself reaches solar maximum, when it has the highest number of sunspots and thus produces the most amount of solar wind, and the occurrence of flu pandemics on the planet. And they do actually provide an interesting explanation to all of this. But is it true though? So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to Adamac. So seeing a graph like this actually does make you question things a little bit. Here, what you're looking at is of course various pandemics including the uh, Spanish flu right here, some other pandemics that occurred throughout the history with some of the bigger ones being this here known as Asian and this one here being the Hong Kong, each of which ended up killing over a million people. Unusually coinciding with the solar maxima, it does make you question if there is some sort of a relationship we're not seeing. So this short article was published in Nature magazine back in 1990 and was essentially talking about how there is actually possibly a relationship between solar winds, which are usually identified by the amount of solar spots on the sun, and essentially the appearance of pandemic or basically the increase of infections around the planet. And the main explanation being that there are a lot of viruses in the upper atmosphere that the solar wind itself pushes down closer to the surface of the planet, thus increasing the chances for infection and increasing the chance for a pandemic. So in some sense, um, even though it does sound like a far-fetched theory, it's sort of still interesting to investigate if it is, because there are a lot of things here that do make sense. So first of all, let's talk about viruses. A lot of really beautiful virus art is actually made by this wonderful person, David uh, Goodsell. Here's actually what his coronavirus looks like. And the reason I wanted to start here is because we don't really know that much about viruses, specifically their origin. There are suggestions that they may have come from outer space, and we'll talk more about this in one of the future videos. But there are also suggestions that these were originally the building blocks of other life on our planet. There's a lot of evidence to support this. And we also know for a fact that there are a lot of viruses present in the DNA of pretty much every organism on the planet, including humans. You can check out some of the previous videos I made where I explained that viral DNA is present inside of us and is actually responsible for some of the more fundamental functions in our body. There are also a lot of viruses, way, way more than anything else on the planet, and a lot of them are very, very different from one another and also from other life on the planet. We've also very recently discovered a virus that is completely different from everything else, although I think this deserves its own video. So there's basically, in a nutshell, a lot of things we don't understand about viruses. We just know that there are many of them. We know that they depend on other cells for basically creating more copies of themselves, so they do need life and more specifically cells from different types of life to essentially procreate and create more copies. But other than that, there is just a lot of mystery about them. But more importantly, in the last few years, we've been discovering that a lot of viruses, and also a lot of bacteria, do seem to reside in the upper layers of the atmosphere, up to about 77 kilometers actually, and this was discovered using these so-called sounding rockets, or basically meteorological uh, rockets that are launched into space or into upper atmosphere to collect various amounts of materials and to then return them back to Earth and to do a lot of other small experiments. These are usually really cheap to produce, so a lot of countries use them. But in a nutshell, we do know that there are viruses and bacteria in the atmosphere, we do know that there are a lot of them there, and obviously they do have some interaction with various atmospheric effects, including of course the effects from the sun itself. Based on the solar pressure studies, uh, we've discovered that up to about maybe a billion or so viruses could be deposited to approximately a square meter of Earth every single day. And this of course is a very interesting proposition. Could solar winds, and essentially solar pressure, cause more viruses to fall onto the planet and cause pandemics. So, so far, all of these different studies suggest that maybe. Now, we don't really have a definitive conclusion yet, and one of the studies that is still investigating whether viruses could even come from outer space and fall onto the planet is still in progress. The Japanese Tanpopo mission, which I'll discuss in one of the future videos, is essentially responsible for trying to identify the amount of various lifelike or even viral-like particles that could have been captured by the International Space Station while it orbited around the planet for approximately three years. 
Essentially, these gel capsules were capturing all sorts of materials for three years and now they've been returned back to Japan and are still being investigated to discover if there is anything there that suggests so-called panspermia or the possibility for viruses and bacteria to come from outer space. But considering the fact that UV radiation can easily destroy a virus, how could it even survive there? Well, several studies actually discovered that a lot of viruses can easily survive a lot of different radiation if they're covered by, um, for example, carbon molecules or any other compounds that can sort of counteract the effects of UV light. In other words, there are a lot of ways for viruses to survive in outer space without being destroyed. And since we've already discovered so many different things related to life in various asteroids, including for example ribose, various amino acids, even the first ever protein which I've discussed in one of the previous videos, this whole idea of viruses from outer space does actually kind of make a little bit more sense now. But nevertheless, does it actually add any credibility to this observation? The observation that higher uh, solar winds could actually produce more pandemics. Well, yes, in this particular situation, but this pattern is actually broken in the last few decades. So specifically here, if we were to look at some of the last few pandemics, including the 2009 uh, so-called swine flu pandemic, and of course the 2020 pandemic that we're going through right now, both of them occurred during the lowest possible solar wind activities in the last 40 or even 50 years. So here is 2009, here is 2020, these are solar minima, which essentially right away contradicts this idea and basically makes it a moot point. But it kind of is interesting, why is it that now we have a cycle of 11 years yet again? Now it's during solar minima. And also here, during the cycle 23 in 2002, that's kind of when SARS appeared. And for cycle 24, 2013, that's both Zika and Ebola. Now, that could be a complete coincidence though, as a matter of fact, it probably is. Nevertheless, it's still kind of interesting to see that there is a cyclical nature to how these pandemics happen around our planet. It's very unusual that approximately every 11 years, something like a pandemic, or at least an epidemic of major proportions, seems to actually appear on our planet somewhere on one of the continents. But that's probably nothing to do with the sun. It's a lot more likely that all of this is related to steady and continuous encroachment of humans onto the areas of nature where viruses could reside in different animals. And also a lot of these viruses did seem to for the most part come from bats. And since bats do spend a large part of their life flying around in the atmosphere, is it possible that they could also pick up some of these viruses that are present in the atmosphere? But that's of course a very far-fetched assumption and needs to be investigated in a lot of detail. So in short, it does seem that the pattern that was observed in the first, I guess, 100 years or so since uh, the Spanish flu up until about 1990s was simply just a coincidence, or at least may have been formed by some other cycle that we're not really observing here, and the solar wind is very unlikely to be responsible for causing more viruses to appear on the planet. But honestly, one of the best conclusive results will come from the Tanpopo mission, and depending on what they discover from this particular mission, we might be actually changing the story once again. For now though, I would have to pretty strongly say that there is really no evidence to support this argument. The correlation between solar spots and pandemics is very likely just a coincidence, even though we do know for a fact that a solar wind can technically cause certain particles to fall to the ground, and may even cause more viruses to fall to the ground. Nevertheless, I'm not going to say this as a fact, because that's really how science works, right? Once we have more evidence, we'll probably change the story again. But as of today, as of this current pandemic that's going on, I don't think we have to blame our sun for this. I definitely think it's sort of our own fault. Human encroachment is the biggest problem here. But anyway, it's actually really thanks to the missions conducted on the International Space Station that we probably will have an answer to all of this in the next few years. Hopefully someone will actually discover something out there, possibly even some kind of a virus coming from outer space, and this may even give us a chance to talk more about the idea of panspermia once again. And by the way, the fact that we've found so many different bacteria and viruses living in our own atmosphere is also the reason why so many scientists today believe that the atmosphere of Venus is filled with these viruses and bacteria as well, and are probably responsible for all of these unusual effects and these unusual spots that we're seeing on the surface that are actually unexplained even today. So in other words, there's a huge chance that viruses and bacteria reside here, and they might be actually very similar to the ones living on the planet Earth. But we're not going to know for sure until we go there and investigate this in more detail. 
I've made a video about all of this, uh, I think last year, so you can check out this video somewhere above my head. But for now, that's really it. Thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't shared this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can get one of these beautiful, wonderful person t-shirts that I'm wearing right now as well, and feel wonderful every day. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.